Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we begin where we often do, at the contract screen because we need some more contracts. We still have one left over because our little probe trying to reach the surface of EVE died. So we have to do that. And with that in mind, it'd be best to take EVE, con Eve contracts. And those are in fact the most interesting ones anyway. Uh, we have Expand Gilly Station. I don't particularly want to expand it so I can have 10 Kerbals and an extra viewing cupola. Why do I want an extra viewing cupola? But, you know, they're gonna pay me. So there's that. And it doesn't have any other requirement. Uh, in fact, we can just send the exact same module that we sent last time. So that's easy enough. And in addition to that, we have a possibility of Explore Eve, which is just an orbital spacewalk near Eve and then transfer any crew between vessels near Eve. Now, we're, I'm not, I wasn't planning on having two vessels near Eve. We've got one near Gilly. We could put somebody, you know, to transfer somebody across into Gilly Station. That'd be easy enough. But we don't have another crewed vessel yet. So I'll have to think about that. And we've got position satellite in synchronous orbit of Eve. And possibly this vessel will be the one to land. I think that would be best because it'll have the magnetometer boom, mystery U unit, science junior and all that business. And the question is how do I stop it from burning up? I think the best idea is to slow it down first and also go higher in the atmosphere. 64 kilometers might have been too much. If we, we can do multiple passes if necessary, if it turns out to be. But we'll aim for maybe 70-ish kilometers in Eve's atmosphere this time and we'll start off in a higher orbit. Uh, uh, sorry, a lower orbit. So we'll use thrust to bring us down. Not the most wonderful thing, but... Another thing is we've got ferry two tourists safely to their destination. These tourists just want to fly by EVE and orbit around EVE. So since we're going to EVE, we can plot them into the Gilly Station expansion or something related and do that. So I'm going to pick this up. Pick this up. Uh, pick Explore Eve up. I'll come up with something. And this satellite contract. And again, we have a, the existing land on Eve contract. Not people, just a probe. Uh, science data from surface of Eve. And that's what we'll try to do. So I'm going to time warp to the Eve window and we'll see how to do this. Okay, so I've already started dissecting this. And what I've decided to do is we're going to dock down here to the other portion of the station. The other portion of the station has a docking port here and on the opposite side. However, um, obviously the battery is sticking out and this engine is sticking out so we sort of need something tapered in order to dock with it so that uh, the new module doesn't get in the way of anything. And so we have this sort of deal. And otherwise this is the same as it was before. Uh, we have this reverse decoupler here and I'm going to put on a 2.5 meter heat shield instead of the old heat shield. But you know, instead of this decoupler that we had, I'm going to go with a stack separator because we really wanted to separate from both sides and not remain with the heat shield and potentially cause some weird explosion. I'll uh, just put here, I already turned off the shroud and I'm just gonna tweak it down instead of using that extra node. Um, we need the Science Junior this time, but I'm worried about putting it directly on the heat shield and uh, I'll diminish the ablator there um, because of the heat conduction potentially being an issue from the last time. Maybe this decoupler here? No, that's really big though. I don't know exactly what's going to prevent this from happening. Uh, what can save us? I don't know. A tank didn't. That that much I know. Maybe this little guy? I, I like them, but I don't think they're particularly heat tolerant. The baguettes sort of stick out. Um, what if we have a small cubic octagonal strut uh, that is raised somewhat surreptitiously? Don't worry, we'll hide it. So it's not at all clipping into that. And then we have some baguettes tucked underneath the Science Junior. 
you know how much I like the baguettes and my goal here is that they shouldn't really touch the heat shield I don't know if that's a thing or not but one thing we do know is that the previous tank that we had not only might have been touching the heat shield but maybe just maybe have been uh, we have been using a 1.875 meter heat shield and it may have been hanging off a little bit from from the edge however I should note that the thing that actually exploded was the controller I believe now we had the problem where we had two barometers here we don't want that oh we had a thermometer underneath that oh Let's see okay so now all right all right and let me just tune its pressure right now well I can just click it on on it there all right to be honest it does it looks like a lot is poking out of the heat shield right now anyway uh, I won't clip the science junior into the heat shield but I'll clip it into that cubic octag maybe well we can move the cubic octag down instead I want to have it fit within the confines of a capsule shape if possible but you know this right now won't help us do the part where so we've got all that stuff we'll ha shove the two tourists into a hitchhiker storage container that sounds like what the hitchhiker storage container is supposed to be for but go on an orbital spacewalk near eve well that we can do if we have a somebody that's not a tourist transfer any crew between vessels near eve is the problem we need two vessels so i'm gonna put a decoupler between these two uh, not a decoupler, a uh, uh, docking port. We'll have a full-size docking port. And I'm gonna tuck those in a little bit. It's a little bit awkward, I know. And then I've already put RCS tanks down here because we need to dock anyway. So we're gonna need RCS there. We already have mod propellant here, 10 units. So now it has mod propellant, and if it has a Kerbal inside, it'll be able to control, but then it'll be basically out of control until the Kerbal gets inside there. So we're going to separate them off, and then this will be out of control until the Kerbal goes inside and takes control. This side will also be out of control because it never had a controller to begin with. I think, uh, well, this is going to be, hmm, you know what, uh, maybe, oh, that's the, no, it's not the root part. Uh, maybe we'll have a controller on here, too. So this also does not have independent power. We need that. We're really making things much more complicated. Okay, so now it has power. Um... I think the 200 electric charge in here will be fine during the time when they're separated, so that's not a problem. Uh, for launch sake, we need struts, I think. Uh, a lot of strut, of course, but this is a troublesome sort of situation. I'll just put haphazard ones. Eventually, they're going to separate. Uh, so we don't know what's going to happen with this. And... The decoupler stack separator goes there. So you got a little bit of power on here, but probably not enough for the copious science. So and it needs a magnetometer as well. Here magnetometer boom. Oh it's 0 0.05, not 0 0.005. Um that's the same as a mystery goo unit. We'll only carry one mystery goo and we'll have the magnetometer on the opposite side. Well, I'm not super certain a thousand four hundred meters per second is going to do it. Uh, we'll see for that bit. And then we have all of this complication, of course. Um, I was gonna tweak that up. I've rerouted to the probe for now. And we've got this bit. Technically, the baguettes combined have more fuel than the original tank, but we've got so much more of a load on top now. At least we have a bigger heat shield, but we'll see. There's all sorts of competing factors as far as whether this will work or not. We're going to use the same rocket. It sure worked last time. and I, I, I want to get back to reusability, but for now, 
uh, this will do. We'll save reusability for when the contracts get boring. <laughs> I hope they don't, but just in case, we'll have reusability spice it up a bit. All right, so there we go. That seems, uh, where's the decoupler here? Well, we uh, yeah, there's, there is a decoupler. Technically, we don't need it. We can use the docking port, um, but maybe I just want to keep that decoupler. Okay, Eve mission three. Now we have to put Kerbals in. That's another good reason not to complicate matters with the launch vehicle. I'm not gonna put Jeb in. And let me just check the auto strutting is all good there. Uh, our probe core up here, let's just auto strut to well, root part is not, it is too close to root part. We'll auto strut other things. Okay, well, we need our tourists in the hitchhiker storage container. Mittop and Barbus, looks like. Now, we currently don't have a way of bringing them back. That's a whole other business. And who is our least experienced Kerbal? Jebin. Val are actually worse off than Tansy and Ornard right now, but still our least experienced appears to be Murpont as far as pilots are concerned. So we're gonna put Murpont in here for now and eventually Murpont will transfer off to the cupola to fulfill that one uh, transfer crew contract. I don't know from another mission. See now, I don't know. Maybe this won't work out, because it won't be counted as another mission. Maybe what we'll do is... what? Okay, after we dock... No. Oh, it's so complicated. Mm. Maybe we should send a return vehicle for the tourists, but then it'll be, it won't be in orbit of EVE anyway. I don't know, we'll try this first and then we'll see. Yeah, let's not mess with it. So we've got those Kerbals in. No, I wanted those Kerbals in. What the heck? Um, Nimmer Pond. We'll figure it out somehow. Okay, there they are. Our intrepid crew. Well, one intrepid crew and two tourists. Anyway, SAS on. Thrall is up. That's a heck of a cloud cover, though. And... Launch. Oh, it's definitely a little bit wobblier than usual, even with the actual struts and auto strutting. Okay, throttling down on the main engines. Still need a fair amount of throttle with them because they're the only things... Well, there is the reaction wheels, but they're the main things controlling this. Okay, booster set and throttle up. Throwing down does mean that our thrust-to-weight ratio is lower here, but doesn't cause a big problem given the boost we've already been given. Okay, fairing set. If we sent a, a return vehicle for the tourists, and then had Murpon transfer between the hitchhiker storage container and the return vehicle, maybe that would do. And we'll shut down there. Pretty close to orbit, but we'll just burn at Apoapsis. Unless we can transfer out directly, which we're close to. Once again. Let's see if we can push that ascending node towards it. Maybe we can just encounter it at that ascending node. Okay, well, let's, um, well, let's see. Maybe rushing things isn't the best thing, but all right, all right, all right, let's go. We'll figure it out somehow. Hitting it over here will make it more difficult to capture, though.
the question is whether we should rely on our communications and do a mid-course adjustment or whether we should worry about our communications and not do a mid-course adjustment. So we'll uh, go for that kind of encounter, which will cost more up front, but will get us in range of the antennae that we already have. And we're meeting it at a node, so we're going to have more residual velocity. Okay, this in this case we might have to get some of that Oberth effect, which is going to cause further problems later, but... We'll deal with that. Can't air break the whole thing. We don't have a heat shield for that. And let's face it, I'm a little bit worried about air breaking in the first place. Well, that's pretty much as close as we can get without air breaking. And that's going to cost 425 to get into a loose, loose orbit, which will be the best thing we can do to get into the weird orbits that we have to get into afterwards. So that will be a proper prograde orbit. All right, so we'll do this sequence. This maneuver in Kerbin SY in six hours. Oh, we might as well do the magnetometer reading. We haven't done it around here before. Okay, and transmit. Oh, it automatically retracts when we transmit. I don't need it to do that, but okay. Takes a bunch of charge. Maybe too much charge. And go. Okay, uh, that's too low. But I think at this point we should just use the RCS to bring it out. Okay. Now Eve is has a 90 kilometer atmosphere and that's 98 kilometers and rising for some reason. So okay. We've got it. Let's go over there. Yep, in space high over the sun. Transmit. Yeah, the problem is it seems to take more than the 300 electric charge we've got packed on the probe in order to transmit the magnetometer science. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off require complete. Uh, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> this always com uh, confuses me. Does this mean that we're on require complete? I thought that the default was require complete and it was already on this. But maybe, maybe not. I I'll go ahead and leave it there. It seems to... Whatever. Anyway, one of them is allow partial and another of them is allow complete and we'll find out at the critical moment, I suppose. Okay, still a safe periapsis around Eve. Just got to watch the electric charge. Well, we've had good communications regardless. We've picked up the relay around Eve already, so that's good too. Okay, we are in Eve SOI. I guess we could magnetometer again. 113.4, jeez. I mean, who even needs a science lab with this magnetometer around these days, huh? But it's taking a huge chunk of science. Ah, uh, not science, electric charge. It's taking a thousand electric charge to send that. I guess it's basically... 10 charge per science or something like that. Once again, this stage will end up in interplanetary space. Okay, retrograde. First time using the close capture technique at EVE. Some lightning there, it looks like. Eve looks substantially more toxic <laughs> with the stock visual enhancement stuff. Okay, capture burn part one. Okay, and capture burn part two. I wanted to start 
part one a little bit earlier, to be honest. There we go. We have a capture. Okay, we don't want to go too low. As long as it's a capture, it's a capture. We want to... Well, we'll separate off the two missions and have them each go their own way now. So let's get the antennae out on here. We should still be low over EVE. Let's try and do the magnetometer. Okay, yeah, 158.8 science. We might not have enough electric charge if I was right about 10 times the science. Let's see. No, we have enough. I wonder why it took so much for the other one. This is less... But we got more science for it. Alright. Okie dokie. Yep. We're gonna separate off the two. That should have its good communications. Uh, we'll just stage normally. Okay, stack separator. Ah, we should have left a stack separator in some suborbital situation. Oh well. Now we've got a little extra piece of debris that some cleaning crew is going to have to clean up, huh? Alright. So that's a thing. We'll leave this be for now. It's in a safe orbit, technically. So, now... This is going to be dodgy. Because <laughs> this is going to end up being uncontrollable. We're going to send Merpont out to it. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, let's back away. But I don't even know if this is going to count as the docking between two vessels, because maybe we need two completely different vessels. Well, we just need an orbital spacewalk. It's not... Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Merpont, EVA. Okay. Orbital spacewalk. Yes. Okay, grab. Board. No. No such luck. Well, we'll figure out how to do that later. For now, let's see. Docking. Ah, SAS, please. <laughs> okay. Wow, these little thrusters even now are more powerful than I need. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so I want to be parallel. So somebody asked for a docking tutorial. Maybe they wanted a rendezvous tutorial. Docking is easy. We want the two docking ports facing each other. I don't... Uh, you'll have to figure out how to rotate it. Just draw a line from the docking ports to and hope that the lines are parallel in every view. So I've got a line there and a line here. And that's par that's not parallel. Okay, so... Uh, I've got caps lock on, right? Yeah, wow. It's also got a reaction wheel, so maybe I should just turn those off. It's got a very powerful reaction wheel, too. Uh, but, yeah. Even at the best of times, it's sort of a judgment call. And you might want to roll it in order to get the axes a little bit better, but that seems okay. I've got control from the docking port. We want the prograde vector on the opposite side of the target vector. Don't, I mean, uh, in stock you can approach pretty quickly, but in realism overhaul I don't approach at more than 0.2 meters per second, so I have maintained that here anyway, even though it's not important. So just as far as the crosshairs are from the target, just make sure that the prograde vector is just a little bit further away. If you're backing away, then it's the retrograde vector and it should be on the opposite side of the crosshairs, not the opposite side of the target vector. But now we're pretty much lined up, so we're just going to line up all three. I see that the target vector is a little bit to the bottom left there, so I'm leaning the prograde vector there too. We're not perfectly lined up parallel. But I think the magnetism will do the rest. 
This would not be good enough for realism overhaul, but it is good enough here. Okay, so, well, so transfer between two vessels did not work. We'll contrive some other way of doing that. For now, we want to get this over to the Gilly station. And I think the way we're going to handle the transfer any crew between vessels near Eve is... Uh, well, we weren't really near Eve, so that's another problem. Hmm, maybe we were just too far from Eve. So, with Gilly set as our target, there's the descending node, we're over here. Well, I don't know exactly what it's trying to show me there, but we've got a really awkward approach and a Gilly encounter. We've got some other closest approach here too. But I don't understand that. It's sort of funny how with crew in right now the cupola is an independent vessel. I mean, can operate as. Let's see, does this really have a... Yep, we've got a ghillie encounter of some kind. Okay, well let's just get to it. Okay, well we're in ghillie SOI, we need to get to ghillie station. And I'm gonna make a correction here so that our periapsis and descending node are nice and close together so we're doing that and also that our periapsis is close to Gilly station's orbit so I'm gonna tweak those so that everything is nice and in line oh yeah that's close enough oh we're going the wrong direction whoops um, we'll figure that out. <laughs> okay, so here we got to add a maneuver to completely flip around. And we'll just do that via the capture. So then we'll have a good inclination with respect to the target. It's not hard around Gilly after all. No need to over-dramatize it. And then we'll have an encounter... Well, you can see where I'm trying to get it. There. Okay. All right. Have Delta V will travel. Nope. There's our target. Gilly ah, stop rotating. Gosh, Murpond is horrible at this sort of thing. Okay, let's see what the situation is. Ah, well, maybe RCS will be good for this. Oh, that's good. And we're going to control from here now. Okay, so that's our target now. And right when we're sort of in line with it, I'll stop. We're going to turn so that we're parallel. It looks okay. We'll get closer and see. So, RCS back on. We go towards and then also correct with the prograde vector. Still checking whether we're parallel. Not lined up, right? Not pointing at the docking port, but the lines of the docking ports, if you project them outward, are parallel. We do not want to point at the target. We just want the lines of the docking ports to be parallel. I'm not rotated properly here, but once again, there's magnetism. <laughs> okay, we just need to maintain stability. Right, that one's done. So we'll still need to do something else as far as bringing the tourists back, and we've got a free docking port here to send them on through the station and go into a return vessel so we'll bring them back and also transfer any crew between vessels near eve now near eve is the problem here so what i'm figuring is we're probably gonna dismantle this we're probably gonna put this into orbit near eve and we're gonna use our fuel here and maybe we'll grab some fuel from this tank too in order to do that and then we are going to have 
Merpont go into the new vessel that's going to bring them back. And this will be an Eve station instead of a Gilly station then. But I don't know if that will break like a station sequence where they want me to expand the station further. That's the whole question. Anyway, we're going to take that satellite and put it into this orbit. And then we're going to move it into the atmosphere of Eve again and hope it doesn't blow up. So first and foremost, let's make sure we're controlling reversed here. Or little ant engines. And our target orbit is that interesting business. We're sort of close to the ascending node there. So maybe... I don't know, it's, it's horrible either way. But maybe we can flip now. Let's uh, start with that, I think. And then at this apoapsis, this new apoapsis, we'll change it further. Or, well, we'll do things in stages. We will have reversed our orbit. So we're basically reversing orbit here, uh, only partly. Okay, and burn. Okay. And there we go. That's the first burn, but I don't know, are we really going to be able to have enough fuel to dip ourselves into the atmosphere of Eve after this? We'll see. So first of all, we're going which way? This way around. Oh, oh, power. Um, we look pretty well in no, about five degrees off. Uh, okay, well anyway, let's get power first. So it looks like this is where our node is. So if we go like that, we should be able to match our inclination a little bit better. Yep, that's improving it. It's probably not going to tell me zero, and this is probably good enough for contract purposes. We... that charge is a little bit tenuous like that. Let's go like that. All right. Okay, prograde. Going up. Well, I guess we can just do a slight radial if necessary. That's pretty close. 171 though. I don't know if we have enough to dip into the atmosphere or not. And then we're not going to be particularly slow. But that looks like a good match right there. So we'll get that contract done. Okay, that is the contract orbit. We have all the things, we just need to maintain stability. Okay, we fulfilled that contract. It's It thinks it's a synchronous orbit, but I it doesn't look like any normal synchronous orbit. But let's see, if we pull our periapsis down, it's close, but we can get into the atmosphere. And we're just going to allow for multiple passes. So we're going to dip barely into the atmosphere, and however many times we have to go through it, it's fine. Our signal is going that way, but we don't have much opportunity to mess with that. I mean, I, I can't... well, I guess I could bring it down a little bit more like that. And then we'll have a better chance to have signal. In fact, if we go like this right away... I guess we have enough delta V to pull it down. Sort of a bare thing though. Let's try 75 kilometers. And again, if it takes a lot of passes, it takes a lot of passes. That's as much fuel as we've got. I'm gonna go ahead and arm the parachute now. And go. Okay, we don't need to node anymore. We just need to look at our periapsis. Uh, really tight. We're probably a little bit off on things, but that's the atmosphere. And that's 75 kilometers. We'll go with it. And I'll just set surface uh, retrograde right now. 
We should be as light as we can be. We've dumped all the fuel. Uh, we might be a little bit top heavy though, so I'm afraid of flipping. Gilly will be in good signal, signal bouncing position. Okay, flip around for me, please. Oh, maybe we should control from the other way around. <laughs> uh, back to normal, please. Just so I'm not confused. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. Heat shield is glowing red. Or orange. There is overheating indication. I don't think it'll bring us directly down. It was close though. But I think it did its main job. Which is to slow us down. Okay, one more pass. Next one will be a little bit lower and I won't fix that or anything. We could have done some atmosphere science, but I don't want it losing charge while I'm trying to transmit or something, so... We used more than half of our ablator on that first pass, though. And we're gonna lose all of our ablator, and we've got no comms right now. I hate that it's not holding retrograde properly. Well, we're going up, but uh, I think our apoapsis will end up in the atmosphere, so we're coming down eventually. Okay, but hopefully that's the last of that. We've got comms back. Okay, and the parachute has deployed. Taking us to very slow speeds. Well, four meters per second, it's not horrible, but it's still gonna take a while to get to the surface. Okay, last little bit of the journey down. Okay, we are on the ground safely this time. I'm going to wait until eve daylight to trans uh, to do any science stuff. It's purple. It's very purple. All right, let's do the simple stuff first. Barometer. Transmit. Still taking a bunch of charge. We'll find out about that. Okay, well, it managed to do it with what we've got, but that was tight. So we filled the contract. Yep. Log seismic data. This one could be... could overrun our charge. Let's see. Yeah. So let's see if... It says the boarding transmission, so it's probably on require complete. See, it says require complete, and you'd think, based on other things, that that means that it's not requiring complete right now, but like the enable crossfeed thing, but it seems to be requiring complete. So I'm gonna click this and we'll see if it's it's actually on allow partial now. And we'll see. Maybe it was on allow partial and let's review data. Well, it didn't send partial, so let's see what it does now. Yeah, so now it's allowing partial here. See, it's sending it on a partial basis. So sometimes when the, the little label says what it's not on, and if you to uh, click it, it toggles to that. And other times it says what it is on, in this case, where it is on. And if you click on it, you actually change to the opposite option. So it's never really consistent. Like enable crossfeed, works in the opposite way. It's annoying. Yes. All right, so we're all done here. And this time we were successful at getting science from the surface of Eve. We still have some other things to do, and I'll take a look at that in the next episode, depending on what other contracts we might have, if there's something else more interesting to do immediately. I'd rather not pile on Eve contracts, but if that's all they're going to give me, that's all they're going to give me. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.